You're 25 years old. You've been studying for six years in order to get the qualifications you think you need to get into the career of your dreams. Bam, you land your dream job. You're ecstatic. You do it for a while. You're really positive about your career prospects and where you're going in life and then bam, we're in a pandemic. And suddenly things don't seem quite so easy anymore. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Is it just me? Am I the only person in this situation? I really, really hope not. I mean, I'm sorry if you are too, but I don't wanna be alone in this. Basically for people all over the world, no matter what stage in your career you might have been at pre-pandemic, the last 12 months have probably thrown you off quite a lot. Um, obviously there are some people who have managed to stay in their dream jobs throughout this. I was super lucky that that was me up until August. So if you're one of those people, kudos, you've done a great job, but this video ain't for you. Now there is a lot of concern, particularly I think for people who were really just entering their field about what the competition is gonna look like when places are back in a position to start hiring again. One of the things that I know I was really worried about was having this gap in my CV and not keeping up vital skills, not keeping engaged with my industry and basically getting to the point where people who were able to work throughout the pandemic or were able to gain experience really had a step up on me. So I've been working stupidly hard in order to try and keep my CV active during lockdown and if that's something that you are also interested in doing then keep watching. I just want to do a little disclaimer before we really start. Um, firstly, I work with wildlife, so this video is definitely geared towards people who do wildlife work or outdoor jobs, but to be honest, no matter what career you're in, I think that the tips mentioned in this video will be useful to you. Second thing is that this video is definitely geared towards people who have extra time right now to be doing things for free. This is not everyone, and if you are in the position where you are, you know, you have a bit of financial cushion or you have enough free time to be able to be doing things that you're not being paid for, then that is extremely lucky. And I think that we need to acknowledge that right now. There are so many people struggling to just pay bills and have been completely written off by jobs. So let's look on the bright side that we are actually in a position to take a bit of time to invest in ourselves and to keep our CVs going. We don't have to just do whatever we can literally just to survive. And finally, if you are struggling to get through this pandemic and these lockdowns, your CV is not the most important thing, your health is and looking after yourself is. So that needs to be your priority. And if that means your career is gonna take a back seat and maybe you're gonna have to change direction, that's totally okay. That doesn't mean you fail. That doesn't mean you're not handling things correctly. It just means that that's the way life is going for you and that's what you have to do to prioritize yourself and it's totally fine. There's no shame in that. If you're not, you know, physically and mentally well enough to work, then having a good CV doesn't mean anything. So if I haven't weeded out my entire audience to basically just me at this point, I will get into five things that you can be doing from home in order to keep your CV active and make sure that when you re-enter the job market, you don't have a big gap where you can't say what you were doing or how you were engaged in your field. So the first thing I wanna talk about is volunteering. Now, you'll have to check your rules in your part of the country and your areas, but where I am, it is still legal to volunteer during the lockdown. This is because so many organizations rely on volunteers to work and therefore volunteering for them is an essential service. This is particularly true for wildlife sanctuaries. A lot of them will not be able to function without volunteers and therefore volunteering at them, absolutely fine during the pandemic. A lot of them have really strict health regulations in place to protect you. If you're concerned about that, you'll have to ask some questions, see if it's something you're comfortable with, see if there's anything you can do or suggest to make things safer but people need volunteers. So if you have some extra time and you're looking for something to do, you can find some organizations near you, send them some emails, just see if they need anyone. Now, ideally this will be in your chosen field. So for me, I would be emailing wildlife sanctuaries, but it doesn't have to be. It can be in any sort of organization that even vaguely relates to what you wanna do. 
So if I couldn't work at a wildlife sanctuary, I'd work with any other thing within the charity sector, because you're learning a lot about how charities run, the kind of behind the scenes work that needs doing, the admin, the paperwork, and you're networking. Just make sure you are contacting places in your area. You shouldn't be traveling ridiculous miles to volunteer if you don't have to. You want to find things local, you want to keep it as safe as possible, and you want to always be following all measures that they have in place. If you feel that you are at high risk, or if you are a vulnerable person or living with a vulnerable person, then this might not be the path for you. But if you're lucky enough that you have the time, you have the ability, really look into it, because not only will this help keep your CV active, it will also be helping out an organization that is probably struggling right now. The second thing to talk about is online volunteering. So if for whatever reason you cannot volunteer in person, or if you just cannot find any opportunities near you, a lot of places at the minute are really opening up to online volunteering. Now this can have a huge range in what it involves. For example, in the wildlife sector, some research organizations are actually looking at people who know how to ID species to go through bulk camera trap footage. It really saves a lot of time for the people who are out on the field. Um, people might also be looking for volunteers to write and file reports, to do research, to fundraise. There's so many different kinds of things that can be done from home that will directly benefit an organization. This is particularly true if there is an organization that you are already affiliated with in some way, that you worked with in the past or that you generally know how it works. It's a lot easier to take on work at home if you already have the knowledge of the place and how the work relates to what's being done hands on. For example, it's much easier to write a report about things that have happened in the past year at an organization if at some point throughout that year you were there and you actually saw firsthand what was happening and the impact it had and how people who were there felt about it and how it changed the daily working life. Or it's particularly easy for you to go through camera trap footage if you've already worked with that organization and you're familiar with exactly what it is they're looking for. So reach out to organizations you worked with in the past or organizations that you are passionate about and have knowledge about and see if there's anything at all you can do from them online. The third thing I wanna talk about is online courses. Now education is never a waste of time. And if you feel like you're getting this gap in your CV that you can't fill through volunteering in any way, then online courses not only can sometimes take a little bit less or less regular time commitment, but they also can really give you an insight into areas of the field that you never even thought about. And this doesn't have to just be learning directly about your field, it can be learning skills that you know will help you in your field. For example, for me, learning a second language is a really, really useful thing when working on wildlife sanctuaries, because you get volunteers from all over the world. So over lockdown, I've been working on my French. But I've also been taking online courses and I'm just going to show you a couple of the websites that I would use to find these on. And I'm going to need, I need my old lady glasses or I won't see anything. So I found this nifty little application where I can screen share with you, which I think is pretty awesome. Let me just launch that. Okay, so this is actually my favorite website to find courses on. I don't know how you're meant to pronounce it. Coursera? 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 I don't know. But basically, you go onto the website and you type in whatever it is you're interested in. So you can see that it instantly comes up. I'm currently doing a course on primate conservation with the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, but say you were interested more broadly in animal welfare. search and then yeah all of these courses come up. The University of Edinburgh I can say is a really good university when it comes to animal studies. They have a really big veterinary school um, and yeah you've got loads of different things. So if you're looking at working with animals either domestic or wildlife at any point then taking courses like this is a really good thing to have on your CV just to say that you've taken the initiative to independently enhance your knowledge and learn a bit more about not just animal welfare, but you can also see things about the psychology and philosophy of animals in our society, which is a really cool thing to know about, especially when working in mitigating human wildlife conflict. And obviously it's not just for people who want to work with wildlife and animal care. There's loads of different things on here. Um, Let's see, what is a different career? What do other, what do people do other than work with animals? 
let's say that you're working in education or, or social work. So let's have a quick look at what kind of social work courses they might do. Here we go. That's pretty cool. Advocating social justice and change. Social justice, con social justice, oh, the social context of mental health and illness. So yeah, that's, that's really cool. You can find basically whatever your subject is or your key areas of interest, you can probably find some courses relating to it. Um, my second favorite one would be edX. When I come on here, I tend to look at courses rather than programs. You can see earlier I searched primates, but let's have a look at something else. So let's go with sustainability. Maybe you want to work in that sector. And then here we go, sustainability in architecture, feeding a hungry planet, corporate sustainability. Yeah, there's loads of different sort of things to enhance your knowledge. So yeah, I highly recommend those two sites to you. Others I would recommend, um, the Open University has some, National Geographic actually have some wildlife courses online. I think they're like six week courses. There's Wildlife Campus, Future Learn, Open Learn. I'll put a link to some websites in the description box that you can do these sorts of courses on. I just want to really quickly add here as well that you can do a lot of these courses for free. Um, some of them, the more intensive ones you have to pay for, and some of them will ask you to pay if you want a official certificate for the qualification. But generally you can go through them for free, and I always recommend doing them free first, and then if you feel like you really gain value from them, or if you really want the proof of achievement, then paying at the end. Okay, so the fourth thing I want to talk to you about is creating your own opportunities online. We are living in such a crazy digital age where people are utilizing online platforms for everything. There are so many online businesses in so many different sorts of topics now that really you are missing out if you're not jumping on that boat. And you can make something online that really directly relates to what you want to do in your career. It's going to help you with networking, it's going to help you with exposure, it's going to help you explore different ideas and it's going to really get your name out there. I actually find that creating online content to do with animal welfare has really opened me up to so many different things that I didn't think about in that much depth before and I feel like I've noticed so many more gaps in what's available in the world of animal welfare that give me so much more to talk about when it comes to interviews and with what change I want to see in this field so I really really encourage it it's a really great way to start exploring different aspects of your field I'm just going to show you an example of what I've been doing in terms of creating an online platform. Okay, so for example, um, I've set up my own website. On here you can really see examples in the blog section of different things to do with animal rescue and rehabilitation and conservation that I've really explored, gone into in detail. In each of the posts, everything that I have referenced is you know all linked you can see all the different studies that i've read in order to write these pieces um the same with about veganism and sustainability i also have my ebooks up for sale on here which again is a really great way to start potentially getting some income if you're struggling with that and i have a new section which i won't click on yet because it's not done that I'm starting up that's going to be bringing together lots of different people who are working in the field of conservation to share their experiences which firstly helps me network but secondly is creating a resource for people who want to get into this field and want to see some advice and some examples of what's currently being done and you can do the same with your Instagram so again this is all about creating educational resources um, I have guides all about different sustainable brands, career advice, animal fact files. You want to do something that's going to make you look like an authority in your field, something that's going to make you seem like you have your knowledge together, you are reliable, you know what you're talking about, but also that shows how passionate you are. Because if you're not passionate, you're not going to spend hours making a website and creating educational content basically just for free. You know, it really shows some sort of dedication. And like I said, it opens you up to lots of different things that you never would have even considered are issues in the field because people are messaging you with things, people are asking you to cover things. Whilst you're, while you're researching things to make resources, you come across issues that you never even considered. And now I feel like when I go into an interview, not only can I talk about 
everything that I've done to set up this online platform. But I can talk about the fact that when I was researching this, I learned that this group is completely overlooked in this issue and it gives you so much more to discuss, but it shows that you are looking towards the future of your career. And yes, you can put this on your CV, absolutely. Don't think that you can't put your online work and your dedication on your CV. If you're setting up your own platform and your own business, sell that on your CV, just do it. And don't feel any shame or embarrassment for that. Make something you would be proud to send to your future employers. Okay, the fifth and final thing that I wanna to talk to you about is attending online events and webinars. Webinars? Webinars? Web, 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 web talks? Uh, so not only is this a really great way to learn from experts in your field, but it's also a great way to start networking. Showing that you're passionate, showing you're willing to turn up and meeting people who are gonna be able to help you find the careers you want in the future. Now, webinars, I'm gonna say it as webinars. I have no idea how you're meant to say it. Webinars. <laughs> um, you can find all over. The way that I tend to find them is actually through Facebook groups or from following organizations on Facebook because they post every time they're hosting something. But I'm also friends with loads of people who work in my industry and anytime they click interested on an event, I go and have a look, see if it's something I would also be interested in. I highly recommend keeping your Facebook totally diverse and following everyone and every organization you're interested in because you never know when they're gonna post something useful. But if you can't find anything on Facebook, then I will just go through with you another screen share. So I'm gonna show you how you can use Eventbrite just to find any sort of things that might help you in your career. So when I open the page, I instantly just go to, ooh, still got this open. Instantly just go to browse events. So I like to be really specific with my searches because I wanna find things that are really, really gonna interest me. So let's say you are a woman and you are working in construction. And instantly we come up with events that are basically targeted to you. Wow, some of these actually look really cool as well. Oh. So yeah, I like to be specific with it because I think one of the beautiful things about online events is the networking and so if you're networking with people who really resonate with you and who are really looking for the kind of things that you have to offer then it's just a really strong network to have you're all going to look out for each other you're going to help each other build each other up and I think that's a really really beautiful thing in careers and again yes you can put different sort of online events that you've done on your CV why not especially if you have a gap that you're looking to fill then just put it on it doesn't matter Honestly, you wanna show that during a time when you couldn't be doing anything or where your options were limited, you took initiative and you did things anyway. So those are my five things that you can be doing from home in order to make sure that when you re-enter the world of work, there isn't a big gap in your CV because of the lockdown. Just remember, if there is, and you're in an interview and someone's asking, well, what were you doing in 2020? No one's gonna be like, oh, you didn't work full time during a national lockdown, you weren't 100% dedicated to nothing but your career in a time of crisis. If they think like that, you probably don't wanna work for them anyway, right? Right? If you're looking for more career advice specifically about wildlife work, then definitely go follow me on Instagram, check out my website. That is what I do, <laughs> that is all I talk about is wildlife, so. I'm happy to help you out there. And if you're struggling through this pandemic and you're worried about going into work, I feel you, I understand you. It's stressful, it's really difficult, but we will get through this and things will get better. We will get back into work. The world will keep going, it has to. So look after yourselves, look after your loved ones, put your mental and physical health first. And let's get through this damn thing. Please let me know in the comments down below if you found this useful or if you're gonna be doing any online courses. I love to hear what you're learning about. Teach me something. I wanna hear about your passions. And I will see you next week for episode four.